All right, greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Welcome to part two of the David Crowder cigar box guitar build. To get you all up to date real quick, number one, if you haven't seen part one, go check out part one. This is part two. Um, but to get you updated, we have two boxes. Both, we're, we're doing two of these in parallel. Okay, so both of them have been blocked up with oak sides and the jack. Both of them have been placed in there carefully with Loctite. Both scarf joints, both poplar, both um, ready for carve and then wings. So hopefully we will get a lot done today tops here again we're doing all of this stuff in parallel it'll be interesting to see the differences uh, similarities and the differences these are going to be the uh, f hole covers so let's get started with part two on your marks get set go all right so i opted to do time lapse videos this time around um, just to cram a whole bunch of information in a short amount of period of time. So here I'm using the half round router bit to take the edges off of the, the necks. Um, here I'm cutting some poplar pieces. These are going to be the uh, ears or the wings, whatever you want to call it, on the headstock. And so, um, yeah, this, this fretting blade, the uh, saw, so sharp. I use it for everything. Uh, so here we are gluing. I'm going to use the glue to glue these wings on. The reason being is because I wanted just to make, make the headstock kind of look like a Martin headstock. Oh yeah, in, in a future video I want to talk about my clamps, dude. I got some awesome clamps. And uh, I inherited these from my father-in-law. They're like antique clamps. So uh, yeah, so look, look for a future video where I talk about some of these tools. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the reason why I went with this headstock too is I wanted to get the curve, the concave curvature on the edge of the head, headstock. And I'll show you, I'll talk about that when I get there. So these are, the fretboards are poplar. And poplar is kind of a medium density grain. And I don't have any problems with this Harbor Freight saw. As long as you go fast through it, man, it hardly, hardly slows down at all. So I let it rev up and then I just jam it through as fast as I can and I get perfect slots. And if not, I just go back with the saw and then, then cut it um, to depth. And here I am just cutting the, uh, the fretboard down to size and then uh, sanding off the sharp edges. Uh, this sander is so awesome, dude. I love that thing. Those are both next. Okay, so now the glue is dried on the wings. And, um, yeah, so this is what I was talking about here. See, see that pencil mark there? I wanted this to have, like, that concave feel, kind of like a like a traditional guitar, you know what I'm saying? I just love the way it looks, and I was, like, kind of, like, surprised that I haven't done this more often, but um, you'll see at the end of the video what I'm talking about here. Um, and you can see that the palette caster in the back was wiggling back and forth. I must have bumped it. Uh, but anyhow, so this this little, um, what do you call it, little disc, that was one that I created. And man, it works better than the one I bought, man, I tell you what. Uh, yeah, so I cut the back angle. Now I'm just setting it all up, marking off where the, the saddle's going to go, where the piezo is going to go. It's kind of continuing to shape the neck. Second guitar, same thing, 25-inch scale. And, um, oh, yeah, so now... <laughs> This is where it gets boring. I'm just filing and filing and sanding and filing and carving and filing and sanding and carving. Uh, the interesting thing about this dark wood is that it makes dark sawdust, which is so cool. Um, sanding and, yeah. This is really, it's, it's painstaking, but it's therapeutic, man. It's like one of my favorite parts of the process is this right here. Just kind of creating the neck, making sure it's going to feel right, look right. Um, I'm all about smoothness and contour. 
So uh, those, those sanding sticks are really come in handy. It's just a, a stick of hardwood with some sandpaper glued to it. And may I tell you what, it, uh, it gets her done, it really does get her done. couple of things. Number one, I want to thank you guys for using my cbgiddy.com affiliate link and um, using the promo code. I had no idea there were so many builders out there. Good on you guys. You guys are awesome. So we actually ended up getting a lot done today. So these necks have been carved voluptuously. Still need to go back and, and sand them really smooth and stuff, but uh, I took extra care, especially right here, to make sure that that surface is just gonna be so, so perfect. So I took took a lot of time. Um, um, don't say um, 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 um. So I'm still gonna, the next thing I'm gonna cut the trench for the P90 on both of these guys. Um, the thickness of this part here was just, just thick enough for this. So I cut it all the way to the bottom, which means I had to reinforce those sides there. So the glue is drying on these guys. And man, I tell you what, this box is gonna be solid. It's gonna be OMG solid. So yeah, these, these necks here, dude, they just look so awesome. Both of them identical. So what I, the only thing I was thinking is maybe I should have got the dark one to match the dark here and then the light one to match the light one here. But then the other side would have been messed up. So either way, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's like these things are just going to be exquisitely exquisite. In my opinion, in my opinion. So like I said, I'm going to let the glue dry overnight with these fretboards. Take the time to set them all up so that they are absolutely 100% perfectly straight. <sighs> yes. All right. Time to sign out on this video. But guys, seriously, thank, thanks again for, for being so uh, aggressive in your cigar box guitar building and using my links. Seriously, that's, that's awesome. All right, guys, we'll see you in part three. Cheers.